Oh, I think I remember why now I didn't post about the podcast last week. Oh, why? I mean, we had to watch Face Off. <laughs> we did have to watch Face Off. I was, off. you know, I was I had Face Off on the mind. That's clearly why. <laughs> that makes sense. Makes a whole lot of sense. Hey, hi, hello, welcome. Hello. To this week's episode of the Season Live Checkup OVA. It's a podcast where we have conversations about video games, anime, and manga. Hello, I'm Jared, joined as always by Doc, Al, and Ladium. Hello. This is episode 233. E. No, there's no E. Three. 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 Oh, I mean, that's what we're talking <laughs> about today. Wow. Exactly. I help. What a, what a gem. What a gem you are. Yay. Oh, boy. Yes, uh, we got some uh, we got some stuff to talk about today. We're just gonna we're gonna have a little chit chatty episode this week. A news episode, sort of. Yeah, you could say that. Uh, <laughs> the electronic triple will have officially started. I guess in a few hours from when you were hearing this. Yeah. Technically, or I guess it's already started if you count the Summer Games Festival, which is technically a different thing, which started Thursday. It's a whole mess. It's a mess. We'll get into all that. But we're going to talk about our E3 preview, and then we'll talk about stuff that happened next week. Hang on. I got to actually make sure we can actually... Okay, yeah. So everything ends Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> um, We might have to... Uh, eh, we'll probably be fine. Yeah. Because the only thing that ends on Tuesday, there's like an E3 award show, which I don't care about. Yeah. Um, And Bandai Namco's at like 5.30 my time. Oh, yeah, we'll be fine. We should be fine. But yeah, we'll be able to record all this Tuesday, next Tuesday. So yeah, we'll have, we'll Yay. talk about announcements and everything next week. But for now, we've got to preview stuff. And also, some stuff happened over the weekend. <laughs> yeah, some stuff really happened over the weekend. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. If you've, uh, if you've listened to our podcast before. Yeah. Thank you, for one. Two. I appreciate it. You might have heard us talk about a game called Mr. Love Queen's Choice. Once or twice, yes. And it is, uh, it's found its way into the headlines this weekend. It, ha- it has. Well, some, some of the headlines. If, if you're paying attention, it's in the headlines. If not, you have no idea what we're talking about. Yep. Um, yeah, so you're going to be able to talk about this more because you are knee-deep in this situation way more than I am. But like, Oh, yes. This all started, like, last Thursday night? Yeah, so... Um, it was June 3rd that everything really started. That was Thursday. Look at um, me. I know time. Because uh, Jonah Scott, who a month ago took over as Victor's voice actor from Ben Diskin, which that was already a whole situation because Ben Diskin was not allowed to talk about the fact that he was in Mr. Love at all, uh, which was weird. But then Jonah took over. He was doing a great job. He had done like a card and a phone call and everybody was really happy um q june 3rd uh dun 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 (laughs) jonah tweets um morning taiwan is a country very innocuous thing yeah um and if if you were to go back at some of his uh his tweets around that time period, you will see a bunch of Chinese comments and a lot of people calling him a Nazi. Uh, Cool, I guess. That's inappropriate. Uh, So, then, we will talk about uh, overnight. It was like 2 in the morning or something when I sent you this message. Um, They, Mr. Love Team, posted on, like, Twitter and Facebook and everything, like, we are immediately ending cooperation with Jonah Scott. Um, he, I'm going to quote, we are sorry to inform all players that Jonah Scott recently has released an online statement containing incorrect facts, which we do not agree with. As a result, after careful considerations, Mr. Love Queen's Choice has decided to end the contract with Jonah Scott. So um, when you when you first sent me this, I was like, that's real strange. Yep. And there was two things in my mind that I was thinking, okay, what was the cause of this? One, he said something like actually inappropriate and terrible. I was worried that it was going to be a Vic situation. Yes, it was like one of those situations. The other thing that was in the back of my mind was like, did he acknowledge Taiwan as a country? And that's why they fired him immediately. Yeah. 
So, like, I went searching around and, like, trying to find anything, and I couldn't find anything. And then eventually you found the deleted tweet, and then it was like, oh, there you go. There's the, there's the, the quote-unquote smoking gun. Yep. Um, so they decided they would find a new voice actor, they'd re-record and replace all of his material they had done, which, um, would have been the card, the phone call, and then the new chapter content that is just dropped yesterday. Um, all of, all of his voice content was taken out within seven hours of that announcement. All of it just gone. Um... Then they removed the posts from Twitter, acknowledging this at all, and Facebook and Instagram, all of it just wiped. Um, including the fact that they were giving um, gems to people as compensation for uh, the, the issue. So that's the beginning of this. Then it escalated. So like 12 hours later, <laughs> Friday was- afternoon. Friday afternoon, it was pretty soon after, um, so, uh, Sean Chiplock, and, um, I'm never gonna say Joe's name correctly, um, what the heck is his name? Joe. Joe, Joe. Just Joe. Zaja? Zaja? I don't know how to say his name. Anyway, um, Sean Chiplock voices Kiro, and Joe voices Gavin, and they both refused to come back to their roles unless Jonah was reinstated. Um, Basically saying, like, this isn't in our contracts. This is not okay to do. If you didn't want us to say anything like this, you should have clarified in our contracts that this was not okay to say. Um, And even Joe was like, I will not be party to the censorship and strong arming of my fellow actors for stating a Googleable fact, a Googleable fact, and one that is totally unrelated to the terms of our employment. Um, And both of them were basically like, hey, we really like this fandom. We really like being in this game. We really like the characters, but, like, this isn't cool. Um, And they support Jonah. And one thing that um, Sean said that I really appreciate is, I'm heartbroken, but I love slash support Jonah more than I do a gig. I can replace the latter. Mm. Um, Jonah then apologized. um, Not for what he said, but... um, For, like, making it awkward on everyone else. Yeah, he he basically was just like... Yikes, sorry, I, I put out something important politically and sorry that anybody was affected by it. Um, after that, it was a few hours later, Alex um, Alex Lee, who is Shaw in the game, also tweeted. It was basically like, yeah, I don't have anything to add that nobody else has added, but like, dude's pretty cool. I like Jonah, which they're apparently friends IRL, so it makes sense that he would support him. Mm-hmm. Um. I'll get back to that. It's interesting. Um, So Sean throughout the day was like, hey, don't pressure anybody else. Like, these are decisions that we're making. You you don't know the financial situation of anybody else. And, you know, just just don't don't pressure anybody. Um, You also started getting many other voice actors chiming in. Um, You get Kaiji Tang coming in. You had Stephanie Shea coming in. Um, Like, you had some pretty big names that were like, yeah, no, this is not okay. Um, Then things started to very much explode. Mm -hmm. Um, Starting with the Discord. (laughs) Um, So I had been monitoring it since everything started. And the Discord was in slow mode, but it was very, um, it was cordial. People were upset. People were confused. But, like, anytime someone was like, hey, what is going on? Someone would say, like, hey, DM me. I can tell you what's going on. We can't talk about it because of the rules of the server. Um, which is fine. I don't see that that's a problem. But apparently the mods did not like that. And so they... As I was in the server reading some things, no, I started noticing they were just deleting channels. I'm like, what is happening? And um, then it got to just the server announcement thing. And they're like, yeah, no, it is closed indefinitely. We don't know when it's going to open back up. Um, they also made a statement because people started reacting to that. Um, with angry faces and the flag of Taiwan. (laughs) 
Um, so they made it so you can't react to anything and called everyone children for not being able to handle the information. Um, and that is still closed. The Discord is still completely closed. Um, they also said that there was wrong information on why it closed, that it was because of mod stress and bullying, which I don't believe, but whatever. Um, Bill Rogers, who voices the murderer, uh, he just took a step back from Twitter. He was like, yeah, mm -hmm. I, I can't deal with this. I need to go meditate. I'm, I'm done. Um, but did not say anything regarding anything else. Um, then came the Anime News Network piece. <laughs> Uh, which basically broke everything down for the most part. Um, and there's been two of those since then. There was the original one, one and there was another one. Oh, I didn't know there was a second one. What's the second one? Uh, hang on. Let me, I can pull that up real quick while you're talking. Oh man. Um, there was also like a Facebook announcement for the group that was like, yeah, this is, this is bad. We're trying our best to make sure that everything is fine. If any comments or posts are made in this Facebook group about the situation, they will be deleted immediately. Um, including anything uh, because people started trolling and doing edits of the guys wearing like Taiwan flag clothes. <laughs> uh, so those started getting deleted. Um, so the, the second one was just uh, like a further, just here's more information where they, we're going to get to where they eventually remove the other dudes as well. Okay. That's what I was about to talk mm -hmm. do. Okay. So um, yesterday was the big story update. Uh, so the app was supposed to update. Um, we were supposed to get, I think, chapters 33 through 35, something like that. Um, and they they had already said Victor was going to be voiceless. Um, there had been radio silence since, like, Friday from the Mr. Love team on all social media. And so the announcement that we got is essentially the update screen. And um, it says that Victor, Gavin, and Kiro are now only available in text form, that their voices have been completely removed. Um, which is interesting, as I mentioned, we would come back to it. Alex, his stuff was not removed. Mm -hmm. um, so, like, I'm not sure exactly what happened there. Maybe they didn't consider his tweet to go as far as the other two. Yeah. Um. But as of right now, the only two characters out of the four and a half main love interests that are there that are voiced are the murderer and Shaw, um, which is Bill and Alex. So you have this game that one of its big selling points is that most everything is voice acted, um, that you can get phone calls, that you have all this story that's voice acted. It's one of the few that actually has an English dub. And now most of the dudes are voiceless. And um, I will also say it's been disgusting looking at some of the comments of the people that are in different groups regarding this. Because a lot of it is just like, oh, well, the server didn't get shut down, so I don't care. Like, just get rid of the English actors. I don't care. And it's like, are you, are you kidding? Like, you care more about these fictional dudes then you do actual real people and also like you care more about fictional dudes than you do like the plight of a whole country like you have so many priorities out of whack people welcome How? to fandom uh, no it's disgusting it really is and like no I, I agree it's so frustrating to me because people are just like for lack of a better word on jonah constantly saying like he should have kept his mouth shut he's such an entitled american um, like he has no right to talk about anybody else's politics. Uh, he's just doing it for woke points. And, and it's like, you know, you have no right to talk about what he feels or what he thinks. Like y'all don't know him. Like you don't know. He might actually be very, very, very into that and be interested. Like Stephanie Shea has said, Hey, my parents are Taiwanese. I care about this. Like, you don't know somebody's situation. You can't just accuse them of doing it for woke points or whatever just because you want to make sure that you can date your fictional guys. But so many people are just like, oh, well, the server didn't die, so it's fine. 
Um, because that was a big question is, will the server just shut down entirely? They, uh, I don't know if you saw this, but they did put out a, a post on the Facebook yesterday, uh, Monday, because we're recording this Tuesday, uh, that, that says, in quote, as of now, nothing official has been stated about it, and we will not, we will not have the group serve as a platform to spread such rumors. We will do our best to update as needed, but for now, as of making this post, the English game server will not be shutting down. As for comments stating personal opinions, we would like to remind everyone of our rules that you agreed upon, specifically our rules about foul and discriminatory language and keeping content related to the material within the Mr. Love Queen's Choice gaming application. Wow. <sighs> So this has been a show. Mm -hmm. Um, and I, I might be unusual in the sense that as soon as I saw this going down, especially like when Sean and Joe chipped in, I was like, no, I'm not playing this game anymore. And I deleted it immediately. Yeah. Um, like I can't support that kind of thing. I just can't, I'm not giving like, even if I was mostly free to play, I'm still supporting them by playing the game. Mm -hmm. um, and he didn't do anything wrong. I understand the politics of it. I understand that it's a Chinese company. I get all that. But he did not do anything wrong, especially if it's not in their contracts that they can't say these kinds of things. If they don't want them to say these things, then they should put it in the contract. Right. Like, if it was in the contract, then yes, they have a grounds upon, like, hey, this is a breach of contract. Mm -hmm. We have a, a right. We have we have our own right to terminate our contract with you if that is the the means that we need to do this for. But if that wording is not in their contracts or anything, like that's super sketchy and like kind of grounds for like what's the what's the term like something something dismissal like unqualified dismissal or something like that. The whole thing's just a mess. Yeah, and I mean, like, Sean and Joe have confirmed, like, this is not in our contracts. There's nothing mm -hmm. in our contracts about this. And, um, like, my whole thought process on this is, is this going to become more common as more Chinese games are coming over here? Like, are they going to end up getting clauses in their contracts about things they can and cannot say? It would not surprise me in the slightest if that becomes a thing, especially after this being a situation now. Right. Um, yeah, like, I think companies are going to clamp down more on this because they don't want a situation like this. They don't want to seem like the bad guy, which Paper Games is looking very much like that. Oh, yeah. they. I mean, a lot of people are saying, like, don't blame them. They can't do anything. It's like, mm. This is their decision. Yeah. Um, and I think the thing that's really disgusting to me, besides what I've already mentioned about, like, the fandom, is um, there are also many, many Chinese fans of this game that, one, are calling Jonah a Nazi, which is not okay. Um, and, two, specifically, like, going to paper games and saying like this is a good thing that you did i appreciate it you should punish their server for this you should punish their voice actors for this like that kind of stuff and it's like are you kidding me like what are you talking about none of this affects you in any way well it is, it is this is similar to how like the the hollow life situation was um mm -hmm. i don't remember exactly when it was um the the ann article has a little bit about it at the end of this article, um, which I'll I'll, t I'll relay to the people if they are unaware of it. Yeah. Uh, Japanese VTubers Kiryu Koko and Akai Hato's live streams originally included a segment where they revealed their channel's viewership demographics. Koko commented on her channel's viewership demographics by region. YouTube analytics list Taiwan and China as separate regions. Their streams were suspended for three weeks, and later controversy ended with Cover Corp graduating as China-based talent last year, which I think allegedly was because the China talent were like telling their fans hey go do bad things to like their their streams and stuff like go invade yeah. their streams and do bad which is why like it's a, it's a still a prevalent problem to this day which is so weird like why would you do that i mean it's it again this is a thing of like you know 
different politics and everything, different countries being run in different ways to where like, if this is how you are brought up living and this is ingrained in you, like this is how you're going to react to this sort of, sort of thing. Yeah. And I mean, like propaganda does work. Mm -hmm. And, um, I mean, that's, that's another thing that's been really gross. in the Mr. Love thing is everyone is, is saying that, uh, China has done nothing wrong. And I'm like, Whoa, yikes. Um, not related to this situation in general, just completely done nothing wrong. And I'm like, Oh, wow. Okay. Wow. <laughs> it is the internet. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's really, it's sad. And, um, I know that like, this has probably been very hard on all of those voice actors. I am very, very pleased to see how much the voice acting communities come together to support them. Um, like that's, that's made me really, really happy, especially somebody like Shay coming out and be like, yo dude, send me your demo. Like I'll, I'll hook you up. Um, cause you and I both know that Shay is pretty prominent when it comes to casting people now. Mm -hmm. Um, and, you know, people were initially kind of dogging on um, Kaiji Tang for his. And he's like, yeah, no, don't, don't come at me with that. Like, my family escaped communism. Get out of here on my, on my Twitter account with this stuff. Like, I don't want to hear it. Um, so, I mean, you, you, you definitely have voice actors who are like, yeah, no, this is not okay. And I know that um, I had some concerns. I know that other people had also had some concerns um, because Sean also voices characters for uh, Genshin Impact. Mm -hmm. um, we're like, oh God, is he going to lose that one too? But so far it's been fine. Um, but who's to say? Who's to say? And Like it could be even a thing where they just quietly let him go and don't do a whole big thing about it until someone finds out about it. Yeah, and I mean, like... Or notices. I kind of honestly wonder why they didn't do that here. I mean, I'm glad that they didn't because, like, I would prefer to know that the company that I'm playing games of is shit. Um, But, you know, they, it would have caused them a lot of less stress if they had just, like, quietly let this go but then you would have had a voiceless victor in the new chapters people would, would have been like um mm -hmm. what <laughs> uh so now we have voiceless victor and gavin and kiro <laughs> and um you know people are saying that they don't care because they could just use the japanese dub which for the record just just so everybody's aware um the japanese dub is behind the English, like server, so so that's even, not even a, that's not even a fix. It's not even a fix. Like if you're saying, "Oh, I'll just use the Japanese dub," you're still gonna have many, many chapters where they're just voiceless. <laughs> like many of your new cards are not gonna have voices because the Japanese server is quite a bit behind you. Like, um, like at least two storylines behind. So, um, yeah, good job on that fix, guys. You're showing them. <laughs> it's such a show. It is such a show. And um, I, a lot of people were saying, like, oh, well, we'll just wait till uh, Tears of Themis comes out. It's like, that's a Chinese company, too. It's the same company does Genshin Impact. So, um if they have English voice actors, then this is potentially going to be something that they have to deal with. So we'll see. But um, I think that it's also significant to think about um, a, a lot of people realized over the weekend <laughs> with all this going down and the server kind of in flux, um, how dangerous it can be to spend money in these kinds of games. Gotcha. Uh, yeah, exactly. And I mean, like, it, it should be fairly obvious, like, this is not an actual material good. You don't actually own anything in this. 
if the server dies, you lose all of that. You lose the content, you lose all your money that you put into it. Like that, that is just the nature of what this is, but it really, really hit a lot of people this weekend of like, Oh God, this stuff is very impermanent. Mm -hmm. And, um, I think that this goes back to a lot of the conversations we've had about like digital delivery and, um, even like game preservation. Um, once they kill that server, that game's gone. Mm -hmm. There's nothing you can do about it. You can't play it again. Nothing. Um, and so I think that that's also something that I really never thought about in terms of game preservation is like all these mobile games, especially the gacha games, like they're just going to be gone in terms of game preservation. Like there's nothing you can do that. about like, it. There are so many games that like are just dead are just dead for whatever reason, whether it's just popularity or just they don't want to keep the servers up or even things like, you know, like we don't want to update this to coincide with iOS or Android updates. Mm -hmm. So. And that what happened with like the uh, Apollo justice stuff. Or is that I, still up? I don't remember. I think like the, the nine, nine, nine mobile yes. game is, is in that vein where they just never updated it. So you cannot play it anymore. Yeah. And that's just a, there's lists and lists and lists and lists and lists and lists and lists of games that have been affected by that. Because, like, if you wanted to go back and play some of, like, the early games that were available on mobile devices, you know, mm -hmm. like, more modern mobile devices, let's say. Like, going back even further, like, that's even a other can of worms of games that just aren't available anymore. But, like, right. if you wanted to go back and play, like, early games that were on, like, iOS and Android, like, a lot of those just are not going to be playable because... You know, they're so old and they just never got updated to to run on the modern systems. And gotcha games in particular, because, like, there's such a dime a dozen. There's yep. so many of them coming out that, you know, there's a ton of them that will come out last six months, if that. And then it's like, well, servers are shutting down. Thanks for playing. See you later. Mm -hmm. And that's it. Yeah. And I mean, um, there was some talk that I did not know about. Um, but there is another game that Paper Games does um, called, like, Love, Nikki. And they had released the game on Korean servers. Mm -hmm. And to celebrate releasing it for the Korean audience, they put Hanbok in it, the, the like, traditional Korean outfit. And apparently the Chinese audience got super because, one, they didn't get it. And two, they considered it Chinese outfit, not a Korean outfit. And in response to all the negativity they got from the Chinese audience, they shut that down within a week. So Paper Games launched it, and within a week, it was gone. It's insane. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it's... I'm, I'm sad because I was very attached to this game and I was very attached to the characters. Like, I really, really liked the characters. And as I mentioned to you when I was deleting the game, like, I, I the dailies were part of my morning routine. Like, that's just what I did. Yep. And so it's been kind of weird for me to adjust to not doing that. But, um, I mean, as soon as all this went down, it was immediately deleted. Like, I just, I can't, I can't do that. Mm -hmm. I can't support it. So yeah, that's an absolute hot f mess. An ongoing one at that. An ongoing one, yes. This is not resolved, and I we should clarify that this is not over. Yeah. Um, and since they're saying that they're going to look for new voice actors, I think they're probably going to have a pretty hard time finding anybody who's like relatively established. Yeah, I mean, there's going to be people who will, you know. Go for these jobs because it's they job. need money. Yeah. And, like, I can't begrudge people for that. No, I can't. But. Get that money. I think if you're if you're thinking, like, oh, we're, they're going to get, like, more prominent voice actors or people with names, like, it's far less likely that anyone with a name will, like, look at this situation and be like, I'm not going anywhere near that. Yeah. And I think that it's also really hit the voice acting community of, like, oh, we really need to pay attention to this kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, which might be a good thing in the long run. But, um, yeah, it's... 
It, it is a mess. It is a big mess. And I do appreciate one thing that was pretty great is that um, most of the tweets that were going around, um, Ben Diskin was liking them. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I was like, thanks, Ben. Thanks for giving your support. <laughs> Even though you, you had nothing that you could say about this game at all while you were involved with it. Yep. Oh man! Except for when he did leave, he's like, "Yeah, I'm I'm happy with Jonah as a replacement. Like that's who I would have picked." And uh, it was a month. That was it. Um. So yeah, I'm sad, but I will live. Live to fight another day. I w- I will I will be fine. Um, surprisingly enough, I I value real human lives over over four and a half fictional men and censorship and, and since yeah it's ugh, that is not okay not okay um so i have been in like a state of like anger mostly anger mm-hmm. disappointment mm-hmm. i don't know what other emotions you would attribute to me in the past weekend but um, frustration Frustration has been a lot of it because the radio silence was really annoying, and also the fans have been really annoying. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I basically just went through a breakup. <laughs> I, You're not I, wrong. I broke up with with my my fictional capitalist boyfriend Victor, and here we are. Um. Yeah. 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 Well, <laughs> let's we'll go from one hot mess to another, and just different different circumstances here. <laughs> different kind of hot mess. Uh, E three is back, baby. Baby. You know they can dox the media and then almost dox them again. Yeah. But E three is never dying. <laughs> I okay. You know we've been talking about E three dying for the last couple of years. I am now convinced. Mm-hmm. E three is a cockroach, <laughs> and look, you can dox people. You can let all of their personal information free. You can have companies just decide, "Hey, we are do not want to be a part of this anymore." But E three will keep living no matter what. You squash that thing, and it just pops back up. And it's like, "Hey, what about the video games? What about <laughs> the gamers?" Oh God. Oh God! And like, just let it die already. <laughs> no, it's not dying. No, no, it's it will it's, not die. It's gonna survive a nuclear apocalypse. Mm-hmm. It's the not Twinkie, because Twinkies do actually go bad. So it's yes, the McDonald's hamburger. Hamboyga. Hamboyga. <laughs> so yes, <laughs> E3 and also the Summer Games Festival is. This week and into Tuesday. Um, yeah, which I guess we have to talk about the fact that the Summer Games Festival exists too. It, yes. Uh, I don't know exactly which <laughs> is a part of which. Hi. So I just, we're just going to talk about things as they come along. Mm-hmm. Um, I will tell you before we get started. Um, on my way home from work today, lockdown came on my shelf and I was like, yeah, it's E3 time. It's, that's for true. So I, I thought you would appreciate that. That is for true. Um, let's see here. Let's go to summergamesfest.com because the Summer Game Fest begins on June the 10th, Thursday at 2 p.m. Eastern, which Whoa. is Jeff Keighley's thing because he is splintered off from E3 now, finally. Um, and he has a bunch of stuff that he's going to be talking about. Mm-hmm. What exactly that is? I don't know. I don't know. Probably somebody he's friends with or somebody who's paid a lot in ad revenue. I mean, a lot of the companies that are partners with the Summer Game Fest are just also people that are at E3. So you have, (laughs) like, 2K, Activision, Amazon Games, Annapurna, Blizzard, Capcom, Devolver, .EMU, EA, Epic, Finji, Gearbox, uh, Coke Media... The the gear the Genshin Impact people, Bandai Namco, Netflix, Psionics, Riot, Saber Interactive, Sega, PlayStation, Amazon Prime, which is apparently different from other the other thing they have up there, <laughs> Square Enix, Steam, Tencent, 
Ubisoft, Warner, Wizards of the Coast, and Xbox. So I'm sure there's going to be like just, you know, there's some games that are obviously going to be at this kickoff thing and then at other stuff that they have throughout the, the week. But I don't really have a clue of what it's going to be. So I don't really know what to like predict here. Yeah. Like, I it have just could no be idea. anything. Hang on. Jeff Keighley hosts a spectacular live world premiere showcase with performance by Weezer. Weezer? <laughs> All right, prediction. Rivers Como in a video game. Oh, my God. Oh, boy. What, so, yeah, what, I don't what know. What video game would you put Rivers in? I don't know. A bad one. He's already in Rock Band. No, he's not like as a character, but Weezer music's in Rock Band, so. Right. But I, I thought you were meaning that, like, him as a character would be in something. I mean, it's possible. But I don't know. I don't know either. Yeah, I don't know what to tell you about <laughs> what this is going to be, so. Um, but I guess, like, if it's something on the vein of, like, Game Award stuff, that it could be a bunch of stuff. But yeah. how many, how like, how much are people or companies going to want to, like, unveil here that they wouldn't want to unveil at their own stuff later in the week? That's what I'm wondering, is, like, how much is actually going to be here when there's, like, a big event a yeah. big in quotation marks event coming up like not even a week later so like, that's it, a it mystery seems bizarre to just like make that why do them in the same week basically yeah that, I, it's it's very strange um the following day friday june the 11th coke prime time Woo. which is the uh coke media group they are the thq nordic people so they basically have like just a thousand developers now in house. <laughs> uh they did, I think, come out and say that certain games will not be at the showcase. <laughs> certain games. Um, uh, let me uh bu- 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 here we go. Certain games like Dead Island 2 will not be here. The next Saints Row game will not be here. Uh anything metro related not here and then they just i think acquired time splitters the time splitters ip and they're like that's not showing up either so like all of your big big announcements that you could have had they ain't here yikes so i don't know i don't coke media has like just a thousand companies so it's hard to again predict like what are they going to have because i don't know half of them (laughs) or maybe even like three quarters of them i don't know there's a new they'll put out a new spongebob game i don't know (laughs) Bold prediction. Uh, same day, there is an IGN expo, which I'm sure it's just going to be IGN showing off some stuff here and there. Because that's just how things are. Yeah. Uh, what is this? As I type it into Google. Google? Uh, the following day, Saturday, is when a lot of stuff happens. Uh, it kicks off at 11 a.m. Eastern with the Gorilla Collective, which I believe is like an indie dealio. Oh, I was like, Gorilla's the band? Yeah, the gorillas are showing up. <laughs> it is a digital game festival to reveal fresh announcements, trailers, gameplay, and more. Woo! But yeah, that's mostly going to be indie stuff. Uh, following that is the Wholesome Direct at 1 p.m., which again is, I think, more indie stuff. But Wholesome. Wholesome? Wholesome. Uh, 3 p.m. Eastern on Saturday is the Ubisoft Forward. Ubisoft. Ubisoft. Ubi. 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 They have also come out and said some games will not be at the Ubisoft forward, such as the new Prince of Persia, and then whatever they're doing with the Division. Yeah, those two games will not be here. It's like interesting that they uh, they're like, hey, this isn't gonna be here. I'm like, oh, okay. I find it interesting that we're getting way more this is not gonna be here notifications this year than I feel like we have before. I, I think it helps though, just like to put people's like pers- like you know, expectations, expectations in the, line. into the line, yeah, to like, hey, this is not what we're doing, so just don't even think that it's gonna be here. Um, they are going to talk about the new Rainbow Six, which is now Rainbow Six Extraction, after they had to change the name from Rainbow Six Quarantine after last oh, year yikes which uh, smart idea yeah very valid very good idea um let's see i think it's all someone else on here what is there's a game called writer's republic which just looks like 
trials but steep but like it's just it looks like an ubisoft game so that's going to be there at the the ubisoft forward they'll ubisoft. probably talk a little bit more about far cry 6 because they did like a whole thing about that i think like a week or two ago but they'll probably have a little bit more to talk about here mm -hmm. um what else would be at ubisoft there was a rumor that they're doing a tom clancy like pvp game with some Splinter Cell stuff in it, so maybe that shows up here. Maybe there's Watch Dogs DLC or new Assassin's Creed DLC or something something else DLC <laughs> that they can talk about. Just Dance 2022. I say, Just Dance has to be there. That's your kickoff, obviously, because that's how they always do it. Yep. If Just um, Dance isn't there, then then it really is the end of the world. I wonder if they're going to show off their boat game that they've been showing off at every E3. I'm on a boat. They had that one, like, roller derby game last year or two years ago. I don't know if that ever came out. Yeah, I don't remember that. They, like, they unveiled it. They had, like, an alpha on um, their their own, their platform that they have. I don't forget what it's called. But I don't remember much else from that. Um, you won't see Beyond Good and Evil 2. No, you won't. <laughs> no. Come on. Nope. Let's be real. <laughs> That game's dead. Yeah, I, I really think that game is dead. Or Joseph Gordon-Levitt is still trying to find people to do spec work for it. Is that a thing still? Like that he does that or that they're they're that he they're working with him? That they're working with him. I Who knows? Who knows? <laughs> oh, I bit my lip. Oh no. Joseph Gordon-Levitt owes you now. He does. So yeah, Ubisoft will probably just be what you expect i don't know how much like super surprising stuff they will show off mm -hmm. pc gamer what what do you tell me about what i should expect at ubisoft please tell us for honor i guess i that game still exists i didn't even remember watch that dogs that yeah so rainbow six far cry division is not going to be there riders republic there he said assassin's creed valhalla maybe maybe will we see a new assassin's creed at ubisoft I don't know, because I think they're on, like, a two-year cycle for Assassin's Creed now. Yeah, I mean, you might get, like, a teaser that, like, oh, when it's right. in the works or something, but... Ubisoft's working on a Star Wars game. What? Which one? They're, it's from the, the developers of The Division. Oh. And apparently they're also working on an Avatar game. <laughs> like, the movie or the show? The, 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 the James Cameron Avatar. <laughs> Oh, whoa. Okay. Roller Champions was the roller derby game. Oh, okay. So yeah, that's not out, apparently. But it's supposed to come out this year. So maybe we'll see something about that. Um, but yeah, that's basically what you should expect from Ubisoft. Ubisoft! After that is the Devolver Digital thing, which will just be pure chaos. Because it is <laughs> always just pure chaos. <laughs> uh, at 5 p.m. Eastern is Gearbox. Um should probably be a mess because it's a gearbox they've already had like their big thing leaked which is a spinoff of borderlands <laughs> wow so shocking and then i would presume there's probably gonna be some like gearbox publishing stuff mm -hmm. around there but that could be literally anything um sunday 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 begins at 1 p.m eastern with the xbox and bethesda showcase they are now one. They are now one. Uh, this could be anything. Apparently, this is going to be like two hours because Square Enix is at 3.15. Wow. So, the Xbox showcases are always just like all over the place because they just get everything now. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, like, they, they usually do, like, a little bit of indie stuff. They do a lot of their, like, first, per first party stuff. Mm -hmm. I almost said first person, which is somewhat accurate. It's also true. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, th they have to show off Halo here again. They, they have to because they have the last to. time they showed off Halo was when there everyone was like, "Oh, this looks like a PS2 game," and then it got delayed like three more times after that. Mm -hmm. They have to show off Halo to, to appease people to show like, "Hey, this game looks good now. Don't worry, we've been working on it." They have to kind of redeem themselves at yeah. this point, especially like Xbox. You know, the the Game Pass is great; it really mm -hmm. is. But Xbox really needs more stuff. Coming More first out party for that stuff. Yes. 
So we'll, we'll see probably some Halo stuff. We'll probably see new Forza. Because I don't think there's been a new Forza for the Series X yet. Um, <laughs> it's probably too early for Gears. Probably. But also, like, Xbox does so many other things now that first party means is very ubiquitous. It's like yeah. all these Bethesda games are first party. <laughs> yeah, that's wild. Um, I bet we get a more tight release window for Psychonauts. Yeah, I would agree with you because um, I I'm a backer for Psychonauts, mm-hmm. and they have basically said like it's it's coming out soon and wait for more information. Uh, so I would definitely agree with you that we get more of a, a firmed up release for that. Firmed up. Um, what, Don't make it weird. <laughs> what weird MMO is Microsoft going to save from the brink of death this year? Oh my god. Microsoft brings back Guns the Duel. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, yeah! Woo! That game was cool. I apologize in advance for Maxwell noises, guys. I mean, Maxwell noises are just going to happen. It's um, true, but he's active right now. What's the big third-party game that they would have? I mean, it's hard because, like, third-party stuff is, like kind of all over the place and there's a lot of third party just things here yeah I feel like the last time they went hard in on third party was cyberpunk and we all know how that ended <laughs> yikes um, um one thing that I've been wondering and I could be wrong on this um so please correct me if I'm wrong I know that it said that Final Fantasy 7 was going to be console exclusive for a bit is that ever coming to Xbox it could, but because that would be a decent get, especially with like new stuff coming out. But the issue would be that like you're not getting integrated, so right. Like I, I would assume that they had like a year long exclusivity. exclusivity window, but that would already be up by now. Yeah, it would, but I mean, COVID, so it might have been true, 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 for, true, true. You're not wrong. Um. But I, since they've been putting more Final Fantasy on Xbox, like, I sure. wonder. I think that would be a cool thing. I don't think it's necessarily a big get, though. I don't think it's a big get. But I it just would wonder be, if it will happen. I think if you do that, you have it, like, like Final Fantasy VII Remake. We're putting it on Game Pass, and it is available to play today. Yeah, that would have to be the way that they do it if they do it. Mm-hmm. So I think that could be a thing. I don't know necessarily because I don't know, like, I don't know how their exclusivity thing is going to work with nope, Square. I don't either. Um, no idea. No, idea. I was just spitballing. No, I think that's a that's an interesting. Like, we're gonna see a lot more. Like, here's a bunch of Game Pass stuff. We might see more. Here's developers we've acquired. Yeah. Because that's become a, a rolling thing. Um, and then Bethesda obviously is going to show off stuff. I think the the main thing they will show off is Starfield, because that's their next big game. Like, it's not gonna come out this year. No. It's supposed to come out next year. Um, but again, it's the Bethesda game, so who knows on that. But I think that's probably the big thing they're going to showcase. Of like, hey, what here's are we this thing. We're going to put thing. Skyrim on this time. <laughs> the Xbox, the original Xbox. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, they might show off a little bit more of Deathloop, but they've really shown that game off already. Um, mm-hmm. Ghostwire Tokyo is also a game. It's also a game, yeah. They are making that Indiana Jones game. Um, Machine Games are making that. Why? It's the the Wolfenstein people are making an Indiana Jones game. <laughs> Why? Why not? Um, Elder Scrolls Six probably nothing unless it's like a little teaser. Um, and again, I wouldn't say probably if they do if they're making a new Wolfenstein, maybe a teaser here. Yeah, maybe. But I doubt it. But yeah, that's probably what the the Bethesda part of this is going to be. Uh, and this also says like Halo Infinite. Yeah, you're probably going to have that. Forza. Yeah, Psychonauts. Maybe some Sea of Thieves stuff uh oh yeah obsidian's making a first person rpg for microsoft called avowed i forgot that was a thing and then they also have grounded um avowed they showed it off i think at one of their things last year Hmm. and they are remaking perfect dark so there's that um (laughs) they're also like Hey, maybe Elden Ring will show up. And I'm like, come on, guys. Mm. Come on. No. You know better than to get your hopes up for a George R. R. Martin thing. Yeah, it's it's not happening. 
Uh, so yeah, that's probably the big thing. There's going to be a lot of other third-party stuff that will show up here and there because that's just the nature of Microsoft's doohickeys and everything. So that's they're just the way They're usually pretty good showings, though. Yeah, they are they are the showcase nowadays because of, mm-hmm. cause Sony's gone. Uh, next up at 3.15, right? 3.15 p.m. Eastern is the Square Enix Presents... Ba-ba-bum. Square Enix presents my butt. <laughs> Whoa, they're going to show off your butt, Jared? That's right. Whoa. I'm like, look at my butt. <laughs> they're like, look at this butt. Goodness. We have rendered it. I mean, we have seen butts in Yakuza, so why not Why not more butts? It is true. Uh, they are mentioning that we are going to have a world premiere from IDOS Montreal. Oh, really? Also featuring Babylon's Fall, Life is Strange, True Colors, and the Life is Strange Remaster thingy, and some Marvel Avengers stuff. Wild. Yeah. Um, I think it is very curious mm-hmm. that they're doing this thing, and they are not saying one way or the other that they're going to talk about Final Fantasy 16. Yeah. Because I feel like if you're going to talk much. about that, you would put that front and center that, hey, we're talking about this game. I have a feeling that that is not showing up here. Yeah, I'm I'm leading more in that direction. Like I think you stood you stood you still could talk about it, but I feel like if you wanted to like really get people excited, you would immediately be like, "Hey, we're going to talk about this game." Yeah. But a lot of this that they're showing off here on this like little image they have is more of the like the western side of Square Enix rather than like the Japanese side of it. Right. So like it's the IDOS stuff. It's Life is Strange, it's Marvel's Avengers, it's is Babylon's Fall. What is Babylon's Fall? Who's making Babylon's Fall? I don't know. I don't remember. Do you want me um, to look it up? I'm looking it up. Okay. I got you. It's the that's the Platinum Games joint. So I guess that's Japanese Ooh. as well. Um But yeah. But for I the would, most part. I would lean towards maybe like, eh, but you never know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm gonna vote no on it showing up. Um It'd be cool if it did though. It's only gonna be forty I've, minutes though, so I've been wrong before. So 40 right. minutes to show off a new game, three other games, one game that's already out, which are two games that are technically already out. Um, that doesn't leave you a whole lot of time for much else. No, it they're doesn't. Not, they're not going to show off any Final Fantasy XIV stuff because they just got all that out. Right. So there's no need to really do that again. Let's just like, here's the Endwalker trailer again. <laughs> People are like, yep, we've seen this already. Yeah, I don't know um, why they would waste time doing that. Not that it's a waste of time, but, like, they don't have much time to begin with. Yeah. So, that'll be Square Enix. Following that is WB Games at 5 p.m. Eastern, which they got out today and said they're not showing off some games as well. Oh. <laughs> which are basically the big games you would expect them to show off, which are Gotham Knights, Suicide Squad, and that Hogwarts game. Oh, wow. That's... Yikes. What do they have left? Uh, this says that, this, this one article says that the only WB game at E3 will be Back for Blood, which is the Left 4 Dead spiritual successor. All right. Which, yeah, sure, I would want to see more of that. Yeah, that one looked cool. I don't know what else they have, though, because WB games are also in a very weird spot mm-hmm. because of the whole Warner, Bo- Warner, uh, Warner Brothers being sold to AT&T. Or someone recently, and people don't know where that game's part of it's going to go. Which, I, but then, but at the same right. time, like, why are they having like an actual thing? <laughs> yeah, I don't know why they would do that. I mean, you can't have a presser for one game. Uh, you could. There's nothing stopping you. There's nothing stopping you, but why would you? Yeah. Uh. So yeah, I don't know what else they would have to show other than Back for Blood, which again, I would. I would watch more of that, so... Yeah, I'd be interested. That game seems pretty cool. Uh, 5.30 is the PC gaming show, which is which is obviously PC stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, at 7 p.m. is the future game show, which I don't know what that is. It's or whether it's relevant era. for us. Future game show, everything you need to know. Tell me everything I need to know. Zero. Powered by w- WD Black. Oh, hosted oh. by Troy Baker. <laughs> cool. Oh, no. <laughs> Oofa doofa. The Future Game Show will feature over 40 multi-format games with a mix of developer interviews, fresh gameplay, and world premieres from partners including Sega, Private Division, Team 17, Xseed Games, and more. So, 
stuff like that, I guess. Okay. There might be something interesting in there. Okay. Uh, but that takes us to Monday. Monday, Monday, Monday. One fifteen p.m. Take two. Ooh. <laughs> Which usually just don't show up to E3. Yeah. So it's going to be interesting to see what they have here. Um, they've also had some of their stuff leaked, which is um, the big thing, I think, was the the Marvel XCOM game. Which sounds interesting. It's like the most interesting a Marvel game has sounded in years. Um, they'll probably show off NBA 2K22 or any other sports games that they have in their docket. Which maybe that means they show off the, the wrestling game. Maybe. WWE 2K22, which, oh boy, could be a mess. Um, high, a 1% chance they show off Grand Theft Auto 6. <laughs> if anything, they'll just be like, hey, remember GTA 5 is coming to the, the, the PS5 and the Xbox Series X? Woo. Yay! But yeah, that's probably about what they're going to show off. I think there was more stuff, but I just don't remember exactly what it was. Uh, Limited Run Games is doing a thing at 4 p.m. Eastern where they'll show off some new stuff. That I think they're, they've acquired new IPs and stuff that they'll show off during that, which will be interesting, I think, just for old games and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And then at 5.30 p.m. is Capcom, Capcom, which they've already gone on record and saying, hey, we're going to be talking about four games specifically at this event. Monster Hunter, Monster Hunter, Resident Evil 8, and The Great Ace Attorney. So, I like, accept that. Two games that are already out. One game that's probably almost coming out. And another game that's almost coming out. <laughs> yep. Uh, but that is all for Monday. And then we hit Tuesday, the final day. It's already got 12 p.m. Eastern. The Nintendo Direct. Nintendo Direct. Where they are probably showing off the next iteration of the Nintendo Switch. Probably. I would be incredibly surprised if they did not. What else shows up at the Nintendo Direct? I mean, I've mentioned this. They have to show off something for Breath of the Wild 2. They really have to. I mean, they did say, like, at that last Nintendo Direct, right, that, like, we're, we're going to talk about this in the summer. Yeah. Or something like that. This is the summer. <laughs> yeah, they said, like, we're not going to talk about it right now. And so, they moved on. You have to, I think, talk about that here. Um, the other Vaporware games are Bayonetta 3 and Metroid Prime 4. I don't see them being mentioned. It'd be cool. It would be cool. I would love to see them mentioned because, like, I I want them. Honestly, to do you rise think if they the grave. if you think they don't mention those, are those games dead? If they're not mentioned, I I think it's safe to call them dead. It's gonna be it'd be something, it'd be very surprising. Um, Which I mean is basically what we said last time. We've been saying that. I feel like. Yeah. Um, until they tell us otherwise. <laughs> I'm going to assume it's dead until they say otherwise. Yeah. And even then, it's going to be skeptical unless they have something to actually show. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's probably going to be some new stuff here, obviously, because it is it is E3. Yeah. Um, do, you, do you have any ideas of what new things you would think Nintendo would want to show off here? Also, also thinking, like, correlating that to, like, a new Switch hardware. Um... I mean, again, Breath of the Wild 2. Like, I think that's going to um, be their showcase. I think so. If it were me, which no one's asking me, it's up for you, because you actually care about my opinion. It's true. Um, I would want something in the vein of, like, a Xenoblade with, like, a giant world that you could show off. So, the Breath of the Wild 2. <laughs> yeah. Um... <laughs> Uh, I mean, they could show off some more, like, Splatoon. They could do that. Yeah, I forgot that Splatoon was coming out. Um, I'm also wondering if we don't get some kind of, like, Mario-related thing. Mario Kart 9. I That's what I was going to say. But I know that Mario Kart 8 is still making them quite a bit of money. But more, if they make a new Mario Kart, they can make more money. <laughs> I would be fine with Mario Kart 9. Um, We've had some good times with Mario absolutely, Kart Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, I don't think you would get like a new 3D Mario or anything like that. So maybe like I don't a think 2D so. I, Mario? I think if you got like a, a side-scroller Mario type thing. Yeah. 
Um, but that's not really going to be like a hardware seller type thing. Right. But I think that it would be a wise move. To I mean, I think Mario Kart Mario. could be a, a hardware seller. Mario Kart seller. could be a hardware seller. Yes. I mean, it really was for the Switch, and that was yeah. just a port of a Wii U game. Yeah. So. Um, um, and I think the time is really ripe for a Mario Kart 9. Totally. I think so as well. Uh, they'll probably show off some new Animal Crossing stuff because that game's still popular. They will probably show off the next Smash Brothers character. Yeah. Which, I'm going to go out on a limb here. Okay. It's just Terry Bogart again. Sweet. Are you okay? It is Garo, Mark of the Wolves, Terry Bogart. And I'm like, Aww, cool. Sweet. Uh, I don't even know. I Look. It's the, you can't. The game's so far it. off the rails now. It's like, you could be literally anything. Like, it's not even worth guessing at this point because, like, it, it's... It could be anything, really. All right, here's my guess. Randy Orlando. <laughs> if Randy Orlando isn't in there, we riot. <laughs> he is the best boy. Goku. Also, it would give Jonas Scott a job. <laughs> true. <laughs> that is for true. Um, Man, I was going to say something. I'm totally blanking on what I was going to say. Um, Randy Orlando, just all thoughts went to Randy Orlando. Goku. No, no Goku. Make Goku the last Smash Brothers character. Just for the jokes. No. Be real funny. Because this is the last one, right? I, no, there's another one I think they're they're going to unveil at the Tokyo Game Show. Oh, that makes sense. So I think there's like two left. At least two left, I think. Okay. Um. I mean, obviously, they should put in Chica. I mean, obviously, but they are not us. They're not us. Um, who who could they put in? It's anyone, anyone, Mister Do. <laughs> I would be fine with Mister Do actually. Mister Do. Um, he's a fun clown. Like who who really doesn't have a whole lot of representation anymore? And like, at the same time, like they could really pull from anything at this point. Yeah, that's the thing. Like, it's literally could be anything. It's gonna be the dude from Fortnite. I, you know, I could probably see that happening. Or the Master Chief. Put Reen Schwarzer in there. <laughs> People off because he's a sword user. <laughs> Mario, but is Donkey Kong Mario? <laughs> jump Man. Yeah, it's a Jump Man. <laughs> Jump man, that would actually be kind of cool. Yeah, like kind of Game and Watch ish character style, mm -hmm. but Jump Man, I'd be. That'd be fun. Um. Hmm. Kazuma Kiryu. You you know what? <laughs> Do it. Do it. <laughs> Do it, you cowards! Look, you just see you see a an invitation float in, and then. It falls on the ground, and then everything lights up, and you see the bright lights of Kamarocho. And oh Kiryu God. walks up and picks it up and is like, Yoosh. Yoosh. <laughs> and then you also have uh, alternate character, Majima. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> Man, he's if only. <laughs> he's the shadow character. That would be real good, but that's never going to happen. It's never going to happen, It'd but God, good, that would be so cool. Uh, Yeah. Again, I had I somebody in my brain, and then you said Kiryu, and I'm just like, all things are Kiryu. So you made that happen with Randy Orlando, then you did it with Kiryu. So good job. You're making my brain I just, just have good ideas. Lose. You have great ideas. This is why you're my best friend. Yay. Uh, I will just say again, like I think I said the last couple times, I just wanted to be someone that, uh, what's his face, Sakurai is happy with, and he gets to geek out over. Yeah, it was and it's so it's not like another Fire Emblem character where he's just like, oh. Or, um, I don't care. Like <laughs> the, the company the makes me do this. Minecraft guy where he was like, yeah. I don't, I don't have a clue about this. <laughs> like, it was so cool to see him geek out about Terry. It was yeah. so fun. Like, I, I want more of that for him. Totally. Um, let that man have some fun and then let him have a long break. <laughs> a long break. Let a him rest. long, 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 long break. Um... I was trying to think of anything else Nintendo might show uh, up. I mean, you know who they really 
should put in there. What's that? We've been campaigning for her all along. There is a lovely, lovely gal from a, a fantastic game called Tokyo Mirage Sessions <laughs> that you, should you know, definitely be in there. God, she would be so cool. That's for true. But like then everyone her... would be like, it's another Fire Emblem character. <laughs> like, yeah, no, this okay. is the good Fire Emblem. This is the good Fire Emblem. Also, she can do music. Yeah, exactly. Um, That's my dream character. I'm do you with it. do you think we get anything expanded upon of the old games for the Nintendo Online service? Oh, like, like is the this the NES time we put? SNES? Is this the time we put Nintendo sixty four games on? Oh, because God, they do not care about those the, the 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 NES or Super Nintendo services anymore. <laughs> they do not care, and it is very obvious they don't care. I feel like um, I, would, I would doubt that's going to happen, but it'd be interesting to see. I doubt it because you have stuff like the the Mario collection that just came out that yeah. had Mario 64 on it. So they're still able to like bundle 64. But they're not games. selling that technically. They're not. But like, you know, everybody seems to think that they're going to do some kind of like bundled Zelda thing. Um, and so if they can sell you Ocarina of Time again, oh, totally, totally, they're going totally. to do that. 100%. You're not wrong. Um, which that's something that I've mentioned before. Nintendo, stop making re-releases and remasters and all that. Just make a new freaking Zelda game. Come on. Yeah, they are. It's called Breath of the Wild 2. It's true, but like, <laughs> I, I I liked it when they did like the, the alter, al why can't I speak today? Like alternating between 2D and 3D? Yes, thank you. Um, I but really liked of, that. Do you think they'd show off like a new 2D game? I would love that. I would absolutely love that. Um, and, and I mean, the thing is, they really have to do something Zelda-related mm -hmm. because it's the anniversary. And they've basically done nothing. They've, Zelda 2. <laughs> it's back. I mean, Skyward Sword is fine, and I like Skyward Sword quite a bit. Um, I, I wish they had done more to it. Um, and not been scummy about it. That too, yeah. Um, make put Groose in Smash. Um, but I mean that can't be it, and that's part of why I'm saying Breath of the Wild Two has to come out this year. Yeah, especially if, it, if they are actually putting out new hardware. Yeah, that's probably going to be a showcase for the new hardware. Yeah, like it would be anniversary, and Which it I feel would like we said for the last like two years. New hardware. Um. Um. I I have seen a lot of people talk about like Zelda bundle packages being announced and I I'm not convinced on that. What would you even put in a Zelda bundle? Zelda Zelda bundle. I mean, outside of what, Ocarina and Majora, it's like do you just put Ocarina and Majora together and put it out? That's what I've seen people say is Ocarina and Majora put them together, I mean, throw that's it out fine, there. It's but... fine. Um eh. And I mean you have the 3DS versions that look really good. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, if you blow that up onto a TV, it's going to look pretty bad. I mean, it, um, does, so, it wouldn't put me put it... I wouldn't put it past them to just put out the N64 versions again. Like they did with that Mario collection. Where they just yeah. put out, you know, the N64, the GameCube, and the Wii version. But just, like, a little bit looking better. And, and I'll controls. be real with you, like, if they re-release um, Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask, just the 64 versions as they were, I won't, I will not buy that. Yeah, not interested. Um, I have the carts, I have the 3DS games, they look better, they function better, like, there's no reason to just buy the 64 versions again. There's none. Yeah. Um. So I won't, I will not buy that. Um. And then, um... Some people have said something about like the the handheld games, which um, I still think that there's an issue with some of those with like Capcom, the fact that it was they made those games. I still think it'll be an issue. It would definitely be a lot weirder and harder to put those back out because of who owns the rights to those characters and everything. And mm -hmm. you have to get Capcom on board and you have to pay Capcom. Yeah, so, it, it, and Nintendo is not really in the mood to really want to do that. I don't think. 
I don't think so. I mean, there's not there's not a huge audience for that. And as much as I love Minish Cap and think that more people should play Minish Cap and think that's one of the best best Zelda games, um, fight me. It's I it's not gonna happen. It's just not. There's so many moving pieces there that just makes it way too complicated. Yeah. Um I might end up eating a shoe. I don't know, but Who knows? Um, I I don't see it happening. I think it's more likely that you do get that 64 mm-hmm. Zelda um, release. And some people have like asked for Ocarina, Majora, Twilight Princess, and Wind Waker all on one cart. I'm like, are you serious? That's a lot. That's a lot of content. They're going to break that up into two and sell you two carts. Yeah, that's for true. <laughs> they're going to sell you Ocarina Majora, and they're going to sell you Wind Waker and Twilight Princess. They're not going to put all that together. No, no, mm-hmm. no. Not when they could make $120 off of you instead of just 60 That's for true. <laughs> um, I feel like the, the one interesting thing that I would kind of want out of this is a new Maker game. Ooh. But not a Mario Maker. What would you want? That's the hard thing because, like, what what would really like fit well with that style? Because Mario obviously is just easy because it's a two D platformer. Everything else kind of is weird and ubiquitous. You could do like a Kirby Maker. Yeah, I think you could do a Kirby, Kirby Maker would make the most sense. Um, like Zelda Maker's obviously been like the one that everyone has kind of wanted. Everyone's wanted, but that I think that would be harder to do. But I it would look. They made Mario Maker and made it even better the next time even though like it was less popular the second time through but like that was an incredible feat Mm -hmm. i think they could pull off doing a zelda maker or like a metroid maker or one of those kinds of maker makers yeah um so i think it's doable but i don't know how like likely that's going to be i think it would be cool if they we get another one but i don't know it's going to be like a thing that they're really interested in doing so soon after but um, that would be like one of my like wish list things. Would be like just see what they try and do with like a different franchise in terms of like the maker style. I have a very weird wish list item from Nintendo that will probably never ever ever happen. Okay. Um, I would love 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 a new um, Toad's Treasure Tracker. I would love another one. I wonder how well that sold. I don't know, but I love that game. It's super fun. You were mentioning, like, hey, what if they did a big sprawling world game? Mm-hmm. Would you think it is possible to see Xenoblade Chronicles Cross HD? <laughs> uh, do you want me to be honest? I mean, obviously, yes. I don't think it's possible. I think they're more going to be focused on doing a Xenoblade 3. Which they already are, yes. Um, Than doing Cross, because Cross... Is weird. <laughs> it's weird. It's it's not going to be as easy of a sell as Xenoblade and Two and um, Definitive Edition um, because of how different it is. Right. Um. And I'm not sure that the team is like even interested in doing that. Like yeah, they I mean, haven't that, really talked fair. about it. That's fair. Um. It, it, it's probably like one of the the last big Wii U games that hasn't been ported over. Correct. So that's the only reason why I, I bring it up at all. Yeah, and um, I mean, like, I'd be fine with it. I'd probably buy it again, even though like I never was able to beat it because they have a very stupid system that like once you get into the final boss area, you can't go back to level up more, um, which is stupid. And I couldn't beat that final boss, and the final boss is just ridiculous. Yeah. Um. And, I mean, the game is fine. Yeah. Is it good? Mm, I'm not sure. I think it's just too much. That's fair. Um, not that not that this is any relevant at all to are they going to put it out. <laughs> it's just my opinion. Um, and, I mean, like, I still have my Wii U out. Just in case I ever decide I want to play that game again. Um, since it's really the only game left. But I think because we haven't heard any real like interest from the team in doing that, that it's unlikely that they would do that, that they would be pressing forward more with one, Xenoblade 3, and two, helping with Breath of the Wild 2. Yeah. Because they helped with Breath of the Wild 1. 
Um, so that that's my opinion on where Nintendo would their efforts to go, right. unless they have somebody else porting it, in which case, fine, I guess. But I I, I don't know. Yep. Uh, do you have anything else you think could show up here, or? Mm. Can't I can't get anything new, Kirby? Or it's possible. Just give us new IP, Nintendo, please. I cannot please. wait for the Nintendo Satellaview Collection. Woo! Coming never. I mean, like the fact that Nintendo did the the Famicom Detective Club games, like that was a really cool thing. Mm -hmm. I wish they would do either that. Or more new IP instead of just like, hey, we're giving you the same six franchises over and over and over and totally. over. As much as I love Zelda and have like everybody knows that I love Zelda, like I really just want new content from them. Yeah. I'm tired of just getting re releases and remasters. I'm tired of it. Yep. Uh, so that leaves us with our final big thing. Which is Bandai Namco at 5:25 p.m. Eastern on Tuesday. Okay. It's a very weird time. Uh, I don't think they've come out and said, "Hey, this is what we're going to show off," but potentially they're going to show off that new Tales game, Tales of game. Yeah. Uh, Scarlet Nexus, I think, comes out relatively soon, so they'll probably show off some like final trailer for that. Yeah, I think um, that's correct. I have the demo. I should play that demo at some point. I just haven't played that demo yet. Maybe they will show off the dra new Dragon Ball Z Kakarot DLC. Apparently that comes out like the 11th, so they could be like, here's a trailer for it. If you want. There will probably be some other anime game that, sh that shows up. Anime? Show off a new JoJo's Bizarre Adventure game. You know what? I would be into that. That would be cool. It would be very cool. And then outside of that, you probably still will not see Elden Ring. <laughs> no. Um... Yeah, I don't know what else Bandai Namco would be chit-chatting about. Let's check their Twitter and see if they've said anything. Hey, here's what we're doing. Pac-Man crossed the NBA. <laughs> oh, heck yeah. I'm going to get a Pac-Man basketball shirt. He's dunking the ball, or he's going to dunk the ball. Woo! Mr. Pac-Man. Mr. Uh, Do. This really doesn't show off anything. Rip. So... They could talk about literally anything. Rip. What would it be? Who knows? Who knows? But probably those games we mentioned and then some other anime stuff. Because that's what it would be. And then that's basically it. There is the E3 Awards at 7.45 p.m. on Tuesday, but we will be probably recording during that. So unless there's some announcements during that, which I don't know if there actually is going to be. Yeah, I don't know. We probably won't get around to them unless it shows up on Twitter, and I'm like, oh, hey, uh, we should uh, talk about this. Mm -hmm. And then a month later, we'll, we'll talk about whatever came out later. We'll at, talk what, about EA? the electronics arts. Because that's how it'd be. Weird. So, yeah. That's, that's the cockroach for you. That is the electronic triple. I'm excited to see new games and everything. I, that, that's always fun. Yeah. So it'll be cool to see what uh, what new things are coming around the corner and what games get delayed because of COVID and everything. Yeah. Because that's going to be a prominent thing, probably. Yeah, that's going to be a recurring theme. Or if they're just not talking about it, it's because it's already delayed. Woo! So yeah. We'll talk all yeah. about all the, the big announcements next week with a little bit of a recap and our thoughts and opinions on games coming out and everything and just what we're excited about, what we're not you know, Surprises. the huge, as we ha usually have around this time of year. Yep. So, yeah, look forward to all of that next week. But for now, that's going to wrap up this episode. Mm -hmm. So if you'd like more from us, head on over to SeasonalAnimeCheckup.com or SAC.cool is where you can find past episodes of this podcast and other podcasts like Jared and Al Watch, where we watched the new Sailor Moon Eternal movies. We did. Where you can listen to our opinions on those things if you'd like. Whoop, whoop. Uh, you can also find columns reviews on the site as well. If you would like more from Anladium, go to Anladium.com. She's got columns and reviews. You can follow us on Twitter and TikTok at Anime Checkup. You can buy our books, One Shining Moment, A Critical Analysis of Love, Life, Sunshine, and Hot Tubs and Pac-Man on Amazon.com. And you can support us on Patreon, Patreon.com slash S-A-C-O-V-A. Buy us a slice of pizza. Get access to 
bonus episodes and unedited versions of the podcast as well. You can also listen to us talk about Face Off. Face Off! <laughs> Which was mostly us talking about Face Off for like a half hour and then going on just wild tangents about video games, mid-2000s reality shows. The Academy and, Awards. And Nick Cage. And Nick Cage, yeah. I mean, that's who we are as people, so people should really expect this from us. It was it was a fun time. <laughs> it was very very fun. It was a good distraction this weekend. Honestly, it really was. Uh, so yeah, next week we'll recap everything that was announced at the E3. So look forward to that. And the next meantime, week, drop Mr. Love if you're playing it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>